Colonel Craig Roberts is our guest, and you can visit his website at riflewarrior.com. He's had a whole bunch of best-selling books, but he's basically out of the publishing business these days. And he said that when these books are sold out, that may be it. So be sure and check out all the great books at riflewarrior.com. We still sell a few of them at infowars.com as well in the online video bookstore shopping cart. Great material. Uh, but uh, before we go any further, you were bringing up Committee of 13. And they call those steering groups. You've got the Bilderberg Group, 125 members. You've got the Trilateral Commission with a couple hundred. You've got the CFR, a lower-level group of 4,000. But if you look at who's the head of the Club of Rome or the head of the U.N. or the head of the European Union or the head of the Council on Foreign Relations, it's less than 20 people. It's, it's less than 20 people that chair all those groups. And then routinely, we will see multiple members of those groups meeting for what they call steering committees. And every once in a while, you'll even see a blurb like, oh, the Library of Congress was locked down for two days while the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group was meeting in secret. So they just kind of throw it out there to acclimate people. And we were getting into, they want world government. Now, Colonel, why do you think they've now gone from denying they're building world government to Von Rumpy, the head of the European Union, Ban Ki-moon, the head of the UN, the Secretary General, Al Gore, hundreds of these leaders in the last six months have announced, world government's here, we're killing the dollar, we're going to tax everything you do, we're going to federalize your local neighborhood, we're going to take over your farms and ranches, we're going to brainwash your kids, we're going to fund the world government with carbon taxes. They are just flaunting it in our face. Well, that's because they uh, they have the power now, they think they've got the power, to where no one can stop them. They, they, they've gone over the hump. They're, they're, they've come out into the open from the shadows, and, and now what they're trying to do is rally support uh, globally from anybody they can. And they, they, you know, they, they sugarcoat everything, and they say it's for your own good. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect the ocean. We're trying to protect the air. We're trying to protect the climate. We're trying to protect the children. We're trying to protect your health. We're trying to make sure everybody has health insurance. We got, And they just go on and on. Everybody's going, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll sit back, and you can take care of me. Uh, you know, which kills, absolutely destroys the original American spirit of you just give me a chance, and I'll take care of myself. And I'll take care of my family. That was the pioneer spirit that built this nation above all the others. And now that's being taken, the rug's being jerked out from under us. It's being bought. We're being bought and sold at the same time. We're turned into chattel. We're slaves. Uh, you know, when they started the income tax, it was a step toward uh, uh, national slavery. And when we get a global tax, it'll be international slavery, because if you don't pay your tax, you go to jail. If you don't pay your tax, they seize your house, they seize your assets, your bank account, and so on down the line. So you've got to pay the tax. So that means you've got to go to work. Well, here's the job we're going to give you, because this is what we say you can do, and here's how much we're going to pay you. And we're, not, we're going to make sure that you spend so much time working that you don't have any time to plot against us, organize against us, or do anything to pose a threat. And that's, that's how you do that. You keep everybody... Uh, so busy and so brain dead with the education system and the, and the idiotic media we have now that doesn't report anything uh, that that you have a problem. And you know, I, I want to make one point. I want everybody to just listen to this one little thing right here. If you noticed, and a lot of you have, I know I have. Have you noticed that when you put on CBS News uh, in the evening? And, and they, they have a news story, and you switch to NBC, they have the same news story at the same time. And you go to ABC, they have the same news story at the same time. They have the commercial breaks at the same time. When they come back, it's a different news story, but they all do the same news story. Somebody orchestrates all three uh, uh, branches of the media uh, as far as, you know, what we're allowed to see and hear, what stories are stories and what stories aren't stories. We, you know, we, we have stuff that comes up like this: these hackers that got into uh, – uh, the, the computer systems and found out that the global warming thing was this giant hoax, and not one major media out there, government-controlled media, reported or even breathed the word of it. You've got people out there who've been trying to say, hey, just show us Obama's birth certificate. Just show it to us. Well, years ago, the media would have jumped all over that, you know, like a crow on a piece of corn, and now they won't, they won't even touch it. They won't even mention it. In fact, if you even mention it, then you're a birther. You're a weirdo. You wear tinfoil hats. And so what they've done is they've taken and, and, and uh, uh, decided what you're going to see 
And what you're going to hear, and it goes back to the original 1773 Rothschild plan that I've got a whole chapter on in my book, Kill Zone, that says control all outlets of public information. That's the, one of the main tenets you have to do. And then you can use the media for mind control, because you tell everybody what's good and what's bad, and they believe it. And, of course, obviously everybody doesn't believe it, but, I mean, uh, the point is that... Uh, so what is the end know, game, though? We, they openly want world government... From your research, what are they planning to do once they have the world government? Well, once they get world government, it's going to be very temporary. Uh, there's no way they're going to be able to, to keep it. And the reason they're not going to be able to keep it is, they, is, is they're going to be breaking too many natural laws of nature. You know, uh, people, the human race typically uh, goes back to tribalism, small communities, small groups, uh, you know, small countries, and each one of them pretty much sticks to themselves. Don't, they may trade back and forth. They may invade each other once in a while, but pretty much their home is their home. The Spartans never got along with the Athenians until the the, Pelopon- or until the, uh, the Persians invaded. Uh, and that was a very small country in Greece, you know. Uh, they're not going to be able to blend everybody. They're trying real hard, but the more they do it, it's trying to, to mix oil and water, and it just isn't going to happen. As soon as you stop stirring the pot, the oil separates from the water. It's that way with people, too. They're not going to be able to maintain it. The problem is there's going to be a certain amount of time where they will try real hard, and they could use everything at their disposal to clamp down and to tyrannically control the planet. And they're going to do it with the environment. They're going to do it with a monetary system. They're going to do it with food, the food supplies, the farms, the ranches, you know, all of that. They're going to do it with transportation. You know, if they control all the ships and all the trucks and all the airplanes, then they control who eats, who, who is resupplied, who receives fuel, and so on. You know, Saddam Hussein controlled Iraq for a long time by simply shutting off the electricity to a village or shutting off the water. And if you don't have electricity or you don't have water, then you've got a problem out in the desert. So that's how you control the country. You shut down the infrastructure by controlling the infrastructure. And that's what Maury Strong publicly said at the U.N. in 92. That's what the U.N. documents say. That's what the new internal U.N. documents that just got released say. They, for environmental reasons, want world government to carry out or orderly population reduction. Now, you brought that up to me during the break. Give us your take, your research on what they're planning once they have their world government in place with population reduction. Well, even before they get world government in place, they're going to, they, they, they'll start population reduction. <clears throat> you know, you can, you, can, uh, you can look at the Bible. You can look at the book of Revelation, of the, the rider of the pale horses, pestilence and disease. Um, you know, H1N1 flu, uh, for one thing, uh, is not that big of a deal. But the media is making it a huge deal, and it's not anywhere near as, as bad as some of the other things we've got going on in the, uh, you know, uh, in, in the disease area. Uh, but... What are they doing? They're using the media to scare everybody to go in and get vaccinated. And if go back to my youth, we were all forced when I was in the fourth grade and, uh, to, to march over to the auditorium and get the Salk polio vaccine. I didn't even know what we were going over there for. The next thing I knew, they were sticking me with needles. Every kid my age got the Salk polio vaccine. And it wasn't until later that they found out that all of that Salk polio vaccine had been contaminated with a green monkey virus. So, you know, uh, the, uh, the problem with that is you can make links, if you do a lot of research and talk to the right doctors, you can make links between the salt polio vaccine that we received and the cancer outbreaks from age 40 on of my generation. No, that's confirmed. In fact, we have the internal uh, Food and Drug Administration reports where they talk about over 100 million Americans, that was by the 70s, had gotten these very rare but very deadly cancers from the SV40 uh Simeon virus 40, which is a deadly cancer virus. Yeah, and, and I ended up with colon cancer and almost died from that or did die from that back in 97. Uh, and That's right, you came friends, back, though. All of my friends uh, have had one form of cancer or another that are my age. And it, we didn't have that, you know, in, in 1880. We didn't have it in 1920. We had it after the 50s, after everybody was vaccinated. So now we're looking at the H1N1 vaccine, and who's to say what's really in it? I mean, go back to the Gulf War. All those guys took shots for nerve gas. I don't even know how you can come up with a shot for nerve gas. The only thing you've got for nerve gas is an atropine injection after you get the nerve gas. Um, 
uh, then they took shots for you know other strange diseases. And they come home with a Gulf War syndrome, and everybody goes, "Gee, we don't know what happened." Well, they were fine when they went over. The people that live there don't have a problem. But the only difference that happened was these guys had to take shots, and they took shots uh, for for nerve gas or whatever it was they had. I don't know how many shots they had over there. It was squalene and anthrax, is what the army admits did a lot of it. Well, it, 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 whatever it was, the human body has a great immune system if you give it a chance. But we pump ourselves full of so much garbage that the immune system doesn't know what to do.